Our guest today in this IPI Global Observatory interview series with candidates vying to become the next United Nations Secretary General is Irina Bokova of Bulgaria, the Director General of UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. I'm going to be asking Ms. Bokova the same four questions that we are putting to the other candidates for Secretary General whom we are interviewing for the Global Observatory. We have shared these questions with her in advance, as we have with all the interviewees. First, the United Nations Charter describes the Secretary General as the Chief Administrative Officer of the organization and the person who can call the attention of the Security Council to matters the Secretary General believes may threaten international peace and security. But the job has evolved into something much more than that a mix of global diplomacy and oversight of the UN's executive office serving the three pillars of the organization, human rights, peace and security, and development. How would you shape the job and define your priorities for this office? Um, I'm very cognizant about uh, this uh, development evolution uh, of the uh, job of the Secretary General. He stays at the Chief Administrative Officer, of course, and uh, uh, there is uh, the responsibilities in the Articles 99, 100, and 101 that you quoted uh, about um, working uh, with the Security Council and uh, uh, on issues of uh, peace and security. Uh, but at the same time, I think the United Nations uh, have uh, themselves evolved uh, into a universal platform of search uh, for solving problems of conflict, but also of development, uh, nowadays also of climate, of human rights. Uh, and I think uh, it is uh, just natural that uh, uh, the Secretary General should be the one to oversee uh, these, uh, these uh, hugely important, uh, uh, I would say, uh, debates and discussions. And um, at the same time, uh, I think the moral authority, the voice of the Secretary General is uh, uh, so much in need nowadays and expectations are also very high that uh, he or she will continue to raise uh, these important um, uh, challenges and mobilizing the international community and the United Nations around the idea to search of a solution. So I'm very cognizant. I think this is exactly what uh, uh, should be uh, expected uh, from the Secretary General. And uh, as long as I'm a deep believer in the United Nations and multilateralism, uh, this is uh, also a role that uh, I see for the future SG. Thank you. Uh, the second question is, can you discuss aspects of your background and professional career that manifest one, proven leadership, managerial abilities, and strategic vision. Two, extensive experience in international relations and multilateral diplomacy. And three, strong global communications skills. Well, I would say that uh, I don't hide that my uh, seven years uh, uh, as Director General of UNESCO uh, have given me an enormous uh, opportunity uh, to prove both uh, uh, some of these leadership skills um, as you ask for and also some managerial skills. Um, on the part of the uh, leadership skills, let me say that uh, uh, UNESCO and I had uh, led uh, uh, many, uh, I would say, of the discussions uh, uh, in the area of uh, sustainable development goals. I'm speaking about goal number four, about uh, inclusive and quality education and lifelong learning for all, which is uh, one of our uh, mandates. Um, I would say that um, um, I, I led a, a global movement uh, for the protection of heritage uh, to respond uh, uh, to extremism, uh, extremists who are destroying uh, heritage in many parts of the world. I'm speaking, of course, about Syria, Iraq, about Mali, uh, and some other places, uh, and something that uh, I call the cultural cleansing. Uh, uh, and also, um, I was working with the Security Council for the adoption uh, of three paragraphs in a, a very important resolution on the financing of extremism, uh, to Resolution 2199, where uh, the destruction of heritage uh, was uh, condemned by the Security Council, and also the illicit trafficking of antiquities, of objects of art, and the financing further on of extremism uh, was not only recognized, but uh, uh, responsibility to UNESCO and to Interpol uh, was, be, was uh, uh, conferred to us. And now I have created this large platform 
of uh, uh, working together uh, in order to respond to this challenge. As part as the managerial skills, so let me say that um, uh, uh, for uh, reasons uh, that uh, go beyond um, our control, UNESCO uh, had to uh, UNESCO lost 22 uh, percent of our budget. Um, for the last uh, five years, um, and I had to cope with a very challenging uh, situation, if I may so, to put it mildly, it was a, a huge financial crisis where I had to reform the organization, to do more with less, um, uh, and I think very successfully we overcame uh, this uh, challenge and we didn't lose any single of our activities or mandate, uh, but we succeeded and then the organization uh, goes further on. Uh, the third question is, the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement afford the UN an opportunity to move forward under the most comprehensive sustainable development agenda in its history. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals, known as the SDGs, have universal application to all countries from north to south. They integrate the three fundamental aspects of development, economic, social, and environmental, and they include issues that were once outside the scope of development, particularly peace and climate change. How do you see the Secretary General's role in promoting and prioritizing this overall agenda? It's a, it's a huge responsibility, and I think uh, the adoption of the Agenda 2030, as well as the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, last year did uh, one of the success stories of the United Nations. Uh, they were very much, uh, uh, I would say, led uh, by the Secretary General, but also by member states. It was uh, a collaborative approach, and, uh, and now we, uh, I think, uh, have a huge responsibility of accompanying member states, because it's their prime responsibility to uh, implement uh, this agenda. More than 70 countries have already uh, adopted their national plans. Uh, the, the, the number grows uh, every single day. And I think here the differentiated approach is uh, very important. Uh, uh, how the United Nations, the development system, uh, also is, uh, is promoting and helping uh, uh, least developed countries, uh, the most vulnerable country, uh, countries, um, uh, countries in conflict. I think this is where the biggest challenge is, because we know that um, uh, just to give uh, one example, uh, the, in the 10 uh, uh, least developed countries, the countries of conflict, uh, are, uh, we have the worst situation with maternal health care and child mortality. Uh, and I think we could not move with the uh, sustainable development agenda if we don't link also uh, the uh, search for peace, uh, for solving uh, uh, some of these uh, conflict uh, situations. On the other side, um, I think the need for uh, leadership once again uh, within the United Nations development system, uh, the need to better work together uh, and also to have this uh, very collaborative approach with member states uh, is, uh, uh, should be very high on the uh, agenda of the future Secretary General. And now finally an open question. Is there something you would like to elaborate on or emphasize in outlining your thoughts on the job of United Nations Secretary General and its possibilities? Well, I think it's, uh, it's a very challenging uh, job nowadays uh, because I think there are huge opportunities in the world. There are uh, good stories to tell, but on the other side, uh, we see a world that is fragmented. We see uh, um, societies uh, falling apart. We see uh, uh, extremism, which is on the rise. Uh, we see an intolerance uh, that is growing. We see, unfortunately, uh, infringement upon the human rights and human dignity. Uh, and the role of the Secretary General, uh, moral, uh, intellectual even, uh, and also as the leader of the United Nations, uh, uh, I believe is, uh, is huge, is, is very important. Madam Bokova, thank you very much for talking to thank the Global Observatory. Thank you very much for inviting me also. Thank you.